Right, so, first of all, let me thank you very, very much for the opportunity of being here and having a chance to talk to you right now and hopefully, after the official part ends, talk with you as well. So, it's a great honor for me and great fun, a lot of fun. So, for all, all, for all of that, thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you. My name is Patrick, as you probably heard, and I am a part of 11 Beat Studios. We are responsible for this work of mine, among the other titles. And uh, our studio has been established in 2010 by a group of game dev veterans from Poland, Warsaw. But what's most important, even more important that they were game veterans is that they were a group of friends and that relationship between our founder fathers resonates in the whole company and because of that the gaming culture and working culture in our company is absolutely amazing and I think that this is one of the reasons why we make good games and we hire we are hiring more than 50 people right now. You can see almost all of them on that photo, because that photo has been made recently. And those people are from Game Dev and Art Department. And they're game programmers, game designers, marketing guys, and so on and so on. And because of this wide range of competences that we have on board right now, on top of our game development, we can also publish games. So we have initiated and kicked off our publishing initiative just to help other studios to gain awareness and gain initial boost with their games and to uh, maybe not copy but to make as big successes with their own games as we made with ours. But that's not the subject of today's presentation. Today I wanted to tell you about a little bit, I wanted to tell you a little, a little bit about our philosophy, if that makes sense, and how we approach game development and how that approach shaped this world of mine as a game, as well as as a pop cultural phenomenon. And I would say that every brand, every company, every person even, especially if one is involved in any kind of creative process, at some point in his career, has to ask one very important question. Why he does what he does? What is the purpose of this activity? What drives oh, yeah. his creativity? And two and a half years ago, we came to that point as a company and as a game development studio in which we were ready to ask that question. And once we came up with the idea for this for of mine, the answer to that question became quite obvious. We wanted to make meaningful games, not any kind of games meaningful games, games that people would like to talk about and argue about even, and think about them, discuss them. And that was our main idea. And I have to underline that, not a meaningful game, because it's not only about this world of mine, but meaningful games, because it's a long-term mission, long-term plan, if that makes sense. Because we strongly believe and we do still strongly believe that games are a new language and as such should be used to tell meaningful stories to allow you to have meaningful experiences because we believe as well that the gaming medium is major enough to evolve not only in terms of new engines and new technology and new tools or new visuals and so on and so on but also, among many first and foremost, in terms of 
emotions that those games can and should evolve. But that said, once we had an answer to that question, a follow-up on the question emerged. How to make a meaningful game? Because, as I said previously, meaningful gaming is not about how beautiful your game is or how innovative in terms of the technology that you use in the game development process. The meaningfulness is about emotions that you are able to evoke. Positive emotions, negative emotions, any kind of emotions. But you have to leave a mark. You have to make an impact with the game. And, that, and that's what we wanted to do. Corbin Grudal, in his book Moving Pictures, conducted an analysis on how movies influence people and how people perceive movies. And in that book, he says that we, as human beings, tend to constantly run mental models. We, we, we run simulations in our heads, if that makes sense. So every time we meet a new person, we try to understand that person. What drives him or her? What's a, uh, what are his ambitions, needs, wants, and so on and so on? So we try to get in his or her shoes, and that's our way to experience the environment, and that's our way to learn something, something new about people we meet, uh, about things we interact with. And what's very important from our game development perspective is that we do that not only while we interact with the real world, but also while we watch movies, read books, and while we play games. And I would say that games are the best medium to interact with and to build empathy. And in terms of this world of mine, in this world of mine, you do not play as a super soldier fighting in a war, running and gunning, and doing whatever he wants to do, but rather as a group of civilians in a besieged city, in a war-torn city, struggling with the lack of food and lack of supplies, and in constant danger from snipers, and hostile scavengers. And so it's a very hard experience to some degree and unforgiving experience at the same time. Probably most of us 
never will be super, super soldiers. We won't have super powers. But we can experience, hopefully we won't, but we can experience a situation like that. So because of that, playing in that role and participating in that kind of a situation is much more impactful. And being more impactful, it evokes bigger and stronger emotions. Inspiration for that game and the whole idea came from our history, local and global, from the stories of our fathers, because we as Poles, all of, all of us in Eleven Bit Studios are Polish, so we had some experiences, our fathers and our grandfathers had some experiences with, with local conflict. And so we had many stories, and we used those stories as, a, as an inspiration as well. But we use modern use because you do not have to try very hard to find new information about some kind of a conflict around the world and how that particular conflict war one or another influence and affects local communities. So we have a huge, huge base of materials to use as a foundation for our game. And I would say that if someone wants to touch people with his message and if someone wants to evoke higher emotions games are the, per the best medium for that because games use all the tools that have been introduced and established by, by let's call them old school media like movies, like books, like music, comic books even because in games we have narrative tools, we've got visuals, we've got sound and music, we've got all of that. But on top of that, we can add some new game-specific tools, like interaction. You couldn't do that in a movie. You couldn't do that in a book. You can do that in a game. And because of that, games, if designed right, are able to evolve higher emotions because of the immersion that you can create for the player. So we wanted to maintain the focus of, of, on our idea throughout the whole process, starting with the design, then the development, and last but not least, the marketing. So when it comes to the story and the setting, the core idea for the game came from an article over a year, it was, sorry, over a year and a half. And one of our directors, one of our founders, read that article and then shared that article with the whole team. But all the follow-up ideas, supplementary ideas, supporting ideas, it came from different sources, sources, as I said before. So we had something from other blogs and articles and books and family stories, as I told you. But what's most important, all of our inspirations came out of the gaming world. Because, as I strongly believe, to reach the place where the magic happens, you have to leave your comfort zone. You have to lose all the tropes that are familiar and that are quite obvious for you and sort of natural to use. You should forget about those and search in new places for totally new things that haven't happened in your area of competences yet. So we wanted our game to be mature and choice-driven. Everything player does shapes his story and because of that in this world of mine, we've got very high replayability because every story you create playing the game can be different. But at the same time, what was crucial for us, we didn't want, we didn't want to judge players' choices because we believe that would affect his gameplay, that, that would affect the way he plays the game and that would affect the choices he makes along the way. And we wanted him to make those choices and make those decisions.
solely on his own, given all the facts that he has, and then we wanted him to live with the consequences of, the, of those choices. Good or bad, that was his thing. And the third thing is that we left some blank spaces for imagination because us in the best groups and best movies, us in the best stories, you have to leave something for interpretation. You cannot just lay everything on the table and explain every bit of your story and every bit of your setting. Leaving those spaces allow the player to get into it and make his own conclusions and then learn something on his own, right? So, when it comes to art and sound, that was an important factor as well because we wanted our soundtrack to serve for, for the purpose of the experience, 100%. So sometimes you play this for a while and you are not even aware that there is a music in the background. But still, that music affects very much the experience that you are having. So, I believe that our soundtrack works in a different manner as a separate product because it's a good piece of music that you can listen to. But at the same time, while you play the game, it is a coherent element of the multi-layer experience. And you won't divide it as a separate thing. It's just bitter and it will like enhance the experience you already have with the game. We are also very happy with the visuals and the whole art design of the game. Because it's very distinctive, if I may say that. I mean, once you see a screenshot from this worldwide, or a piece of a movie, gameplay movie, or whatever, you know that this is this worldwide. It's one of one of a kind. And we wanted it to be as realistic as possible, just to just just to make you believe in what's happening on the screen. But at the same time, we wanted to add this style on top of it to mask artificiality so we wouldn't break from the road. That was important for us. We are an indie studio. We could not afford a big bank Call of Duty visuals. So we had to deal with what we had. And yeah, and it was quite good. I think that good, the, the results were okay. And when it comes to game design, we made few choices. That yeah. happened by design as well. So, first of all, lack of tutorials. We didn't want to explain you anything. Because, as in the real life, in this world of mine, you have to learn everything on your own. That's the deal. And because of the same reason, you cannot adjust a difficulty level. You cannot adjust a difficulty level in your real life. So, why would you learn? It is what it is, deal with that. And because of that, players struggle. But every success, every little success in the game feels like an achievement. So it's kind of a risk and reward, but it works in a good manner. And when it comes to the communication and marketing, that's the last part of the presentation. But the main thing for us here, because of our lower budget, we know that we were an underdog. We knew that we were an underdog. We had no significant track record. We had some games, but nothing that could compete with AAA titles. But we had the same needs. We knew our product is good. So in our marketing campaign, we also stay focused on this idea of new perspective on war. And we prepared every new trailer using that single idea. We stay focused, consistent, and single-minded. So we told people that in war, not everyone is a soldier, and we prepared a trailer based on that, and then some gameplay trailers. And afterwards, once we uh, released uh, an expansion pack, the little ones, we repeated that, but with new words, 
and a new approach. As I said before, it's a simple thing. You show some familiar tropes. You show a Call of Duty-like scene. And then you show that there is another side to that. That there is a new approach, new perspective. And people think that we as players are very mature. We seek for new experiences. We seek for new things. We are tired with all the repetition that is going on right now in gaming world. So in this scene, the perfect area, perfect source of new inspiration and new ideas. I won't show you the second trailer because we do not have uh, time for that, but that consistency gave us credibility and we could reforge that credibility into real life. So we started a cooperation with the World Child Foundation and we gained some money for them to help children across the world that were in casualties of war. And we gave a huge amount of money for them, over $200,000 as far as I remember. So it was very, very good. But the conclusion is quite simple. To make your game strong, you have to make it idea-based. Very consistent, very relevant, and focused on the experience you want to achieve. You have to think about the options and everything that you also will follow. Because once you pinpoint the idea of the experience you have to create, you're gonna constantly know, you're gonna instantly know what art to use, what music to compose, and what mechanics to implement to make that thing happen. Yeah, and that will pay off sooner or later, for sure. Thank you very much.